public private partnership coming to an understanding of that uh, is important so let me push my laptop out of the way and i'm going to uh, have some fun and you might grit your teeth but i'm a lefty so my handwriting's kind of bad uh, if you need me to interpret i can do that so if I was to give you a quick shortcut here, I'm going to subdivide it as public and private sport venture. <coughs> and the defining characteristics of public is government and private is privateers probably a word you haven't used much we that work and own sport businesses and own them privately or we own them privately, but the, the stock is sold on a public market, such as the NYSE or the NASDAQ. In either case, they're owned and operated in the private context of the marketplace. 99% of the sport businesses out there are, well, it's maybe not that high. It's probably 90 to 95% of all sport businesses are privately held, privately owned, privately operated sport businesses. The, the key demarcation for that is that they're not government-owned, government-initiated. Public sport is always government-owned, government-initiated. So you'll associate the key word with a government. It could be a local government, it could be a state government, it could be a federal government, or an agency that's under the um, authority of the government. So now let me, let me give you some examples so it kind of solidifies, and then we can begin to bounce back and forth. But... But at the local level, the local recreation department, every county, every city, every community, most birds, most, most, there's probably thousands of recreation departments in this country, thousands. And they're all funded by local tax dollars who hire folks like us to go work there and we work as a city or a county employee. So the city of Greenville has a recreation department, Greenville County has a recreation department, and then even subsets. Greer has a recreation component and several other subsets. Um, south of town, they have their own, and sometimes they partner with Greenville County and sometimes they don't. Um, Spartanburg County has a recreation department. Um, they have a lot of a lot of locations, right, Connor? One of the locations that you work for is the Tiger River Park. But for those who are employees there, you actually work for who? When your paycheck comes and whenever you're actually a Greenville County employee through the Parks and Recs Department or Division, and you are assigned to Tiger River. So, but in any sense, anybody that works at those is a government employee working in the parks and recs district or division or department assigned to a specific location or mobile several locations. So on a local level, a recreation department is a government owned, government oriented sport business. On a state level, all of your state schools Some of you might have heard of that little school down the road, Clemson University, or a little bit bigger one, University of South Carolina. They have athletic departments. The athletic departments employ a lot of people. And if you work for Clemson's athletic department, you're actually an employee of the state of South Carolina, assigned in Clemson to work in the athletic department. Well, who owns Clemson University? The state does. Who funds Clemson University? Ultimately, the state hires the president. The president hires everybody else down. Board of chancellors, trustees. So the president is, is responsible to hire everybody in the athletic department. Now he lets the ADs kind of you know run their run their department or division. But everybody in Clemson's athletics, everybody in USC's athletics, 
in every USC around the state, what is it, the USC Upstate, and, 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 and one in Aiken, and you got nice facilities, and several others. All those athletic folk, if you're an AD over here in Spartanburg, or, or down in, in, um, in um, USC Aiken, and you work in the athletic department, you're actually a state employee. You work in what's called public sport, for a state government, but you are employed at USC Aiken or USC Upstate or USC Columbia for the athletic department. When I was at Florida State in the late 1990s, I used to hang out with a guy by the last name of Bowden. On Thursdays, he would let faculty come into his office between one and three. You could schedule appointments and go meet and visit with him. And his office was and I would take advantage of that routinely. So I got on his schedule, got to know his secretary. I bought her flowers once, brought her candy once, and but she put me on schedule every week. You know, when you treat people nice, they do you right. It's that easy. You know, a little dark chocolate, what she'd like, a couple of flowers here and there. And next thing you know, I just call her, oh yeah, one third, you got it. I mean, I just, it was that easy. And do unto others, you would have them do unto you. That's how I've lived my life all my life. So I used to go up in his office with about twice as long as this room here. And you'd walk in and it was like just walls of trophies and plaques and national championship footballs. And this old crotchety man who was really sweet and loved the Lord sat at this desk back there. His name was Bobby Bowden. And he since retired and moved on. But uh, back then they were he was championship coaches winning 10 games a year in most bowl games. But uh, you could spend 15 minutes and you could cajole with him. And I did it for about a year and a half, almost every Thursday, once I got my little routine set up and got to connect with him. But he was a state employee. He worked at Florida State. His paycheck came from the Florida State, but it went through the state employee credit union. He was an employee of the state of, South, of uh, Florida. In Florida, nobody was allowed to make any more money than the, the governor of Florida. At that time, the governor was a young man by the name of Bush, Jeb Bush, who was actually a really good conservative governor. He's gotten a little more corrupted in his older years. Family money will tend to do that. But back then, he was a great conservative governor, and the Florida folks loved him. And uh, and the governor, I don't know, he made like 200000 back then. So Bobby Bowden made $199,900. He made like $10 or less or $100 or less than the governor. But his contract was for a million dollars, so the athletic department had to raise all the additional monies in a lot of ways to supplement his contract. He was an employee of the state. He had to abide by the state payroll regulations that were set out by the state constitution and stuff like that, and the university's athletic department had to supplement the difference. So anybody that works in a state school, Clemson, USC, there's lots of state schools in the state. You're, you work for public sport. Army, Navy, have athletic departments, right? Air Force. Who funds those institutions? The government does. Who owns Army, Navy, and Air Force institutions? The United States does. Well, we don't own it, but we manage it. It's understanding nonprofit will get there. So anybody who works in the athletic department of Army or Navy or Air Force, whether you're a coach or you're the athletic administrator, or you're a GA, you work for the federal government who's been assigned to Army or Navy or Air Force and working in athletics. <clears throat> so, public government. There are over 500 Army bases around the world. Now, these may have added or subtracted a few. And on most of those, we have fitness centers. Most. And on quite a few of them, we have golf courses. Bowling centers. We have all kinds of recreation. <clears throat> now the government hires sport professionals like ourselves. And 
you know, hire us as civil service employees to go and run the fitness centers on army bases and military bases. <coughs> and to go and run the golf courses and the bowling establishments and to run the military fitness games and events and to provide the facilities and the programming and the managing of the assets that are owned by the military. They're managed by the military, but they're owned by the government. And there are lots of jobs. I've actually had graduates come out of our program and, and get hired. They've done internships on military bases. They, they've been hired by military bases to be those civil service employees and work for the government in the sport profession because the government has an angle in the sport profession. Public sport ventures. Can any of you, I can keep going, think of an example that you've come across or that you might be aware of at the local, state, or federal level that is a public sport venture? Okay, local. All public. We have several of our coaching majors that graduate, go work as coaches in the school system. Uh, if you were in the class with me last year, we had uh, Gooch come and speak, Andre Gooch Wolcott. Was anybody in that class when he spoke? And so he's a graduate of ours out of our sport management program around 2009 or 10. Went on and did his master's with us, GA for us, and then he went and became a high school coach. And everywhere he's gone, he's won. Now, this year's having a difficult year, but so far in his first 10 years of coaching, he's won in eight or nine of the 10 years, and he's been able to move up and command more money. But every school that he's worked for has been a local public school, and who funds and pays for athletics in the local public schools? Taxpayers. The taxpayers do, that pay into, and we'll talk about this, sales tax and property tax, and there's several other specialty taxes that go and a percentage of all of our tax dollars are reserved for the Board of Education, who has a budget that's run by the local government that dispenses a significant amount to the school system, which has an allocation of that toward sports. And then we have athletic directors, and we have coaches, and we have sporting events and conferences, and, and tomorrow night there'll be lots of high school football play. Most of those coaches are, are either part-time or full-time paid by a government agency that are working in the sport industry in the public sector or public arena. Somebody else have another example. Example for me. Another part of the world, maybe. Government funded sport. Oh. Now hold on, I want to challenge this fine young man. He makes it so Government funded sport. Yeah. In many countries, you have an entire department called the Ministry of Sport. You might have learned about this in your international sport management class. Some of you will take that in the spring, I get that. We here have a large portion of our sport profession that's privatized. In some many smaller countries, the government provides the entire sport. The Ministry of Sport is a big department, and they have lots of employees that work. And in smaller countries, whether African nations or South American nations, all their sport is run through not schools like us or private organizations and private settings. Remember, our sport marketplace here in the West is the most advanced in the whole world. But you go around to other countries, to Panama and Nicaragua and Uganda and wherever, and they've got a small government entity that runs all the sport from professional all the way down to peewee. And so the Ministry of Sport and the Department of Sport, yada, 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 is, is a government-funded agency. 
So you'll, you'll learn more about that in the international sport, but that's a publicly supported venture. Anybody else? One more. Jesse, yes. Uh, You're anxious. Uh, uh, the national teams, Olympics, Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, so we have, we have, we'll, we'll, we have what? The, uh, called the USOC, United States Olympic Committee, which is under the IOC. Has anybody taken that class yet? We don't want to get too far into that. Nolan is the only one, and James, and Doug. Good. And so every country has an Olympic organizing committee, the United States Olympic Committee. Uh, is a combination of public and private. So it receives aid and support in many ways from our government, but they also have to raise and develop a financial model that's largely independent of government support. Now, many of the International Olympic uh, Feder uh, uh, the uh, organizing committees in the other countries are funded by government. We get a percentage of support or a portion of support from government. But so it's it's what you call a hybrid, where its operating model is is probably more privatized than it is public, but it has a combination of two. Anybody else? Examples? Public sport. Is the boys and girls club? Uh, right. No, let's let's talk about it's confusing. Let's talk about YMCA's, YWCA's. Right. A YMCA boys club. Uh, be gender girls club. YWCA. Yeah. What kind of businesses are those? Funded by government, yes. managed by government, yes. owned by government. Yes, sir. Nonprofit. I think so. What, what leads you to believe that? What convinces you of that? Now you got to think about it. So okay, but are we talking about? Have I at all mentioned profit or nonprofit? Yet? No. Talk about who owns it and what they're doing. Who owns a YMCA? Do they? That's the honest. Such a public statement. Who owns Upward Sports? I don't know. We do recognize that these are nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Who owns the Boy Scouts? Or is it the LGBT Scouts? I, I, don't know. <laughs> I can't keep up with all this stuff. That was a good stuff. When it was Boy Scout. I like to buy. I like to buy Girl Scout cookies. Thin Mints are my favorite. Not LGBT cookies. I like Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> if you don't think that's funny, you can chastise me afterwards and I won't do that anymore. I'm sorry if I offended you. Who owns Upward Sports? Who owns the Boy Scouts? Who owns YWCAs? No one. Yes. No one owns it. Since my volunteer trustees. They're managed and overseen. And administrated by trustees. Who owns your church? Jesus. He does. We're not talking about that though. <laughs> Even though we are. We're not. But we are. But we're not. Because he already owns everything. Psalm 24 1. You all know Psalm 23. Nobody ever gets past the last verse. Psalm 24 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything within it, the world and all <coughs> the things. Okay, so he owns all this. All right, get past that. Who owns your church? It's not a pastor. Who is it? You might ask your, some of your pastors may not know. That's why they need a business exec. Yeah. I'm a gun for hire. Let your pastor know you know a good one. Who owns your church? Nobody does. 
Who oversees it? Board of Trustees, Board of Elders, Board of Directors. Who owns North Greenville University? No one does. Nobody does. Nobody does. The Board of Trustees hires a president to oversee the <coughs> operations, to be responsible. Dr. Fant is the responsible party that reports directly to the board. He hires everybody below him, he manages them, he has to do everything, but he's responsible to the board. And so when a nonprofit organization is formed, it's formed as an entity of the state. And then once the entity is granted nonprofit status, they're allowed to go out and buy land in the name of the entity as a nonprofit without any personal ownership. Nobody else <coughs> is sure. Now it's under a 501c3, and maybe that's a local one or a state one or an international one. It's oversaw by your local elders or board of trustees or directors, or maybe your regional or national, your international ministry. And you can talk to your, your um, uh, executives of your church to see if any of them understand that. M many times they get misconstrued and misunderstood. <coughs> but in this case, does, does that make these guys a public sport entity? Or a private sport entity? Yes. Neither. <laughs> some, some, some maybe. One, yeah. some both. Yeah. Well, let's figure it out. Does the government fund upward sports? Does the government fund your church? No. Yes. Does the government fund the YMCA's and YWCA's? Does the government hire the people to run these organizations? No. No. So if there's no government oversight, now that doesn't mean they, they still have to abide by human resource law, still have to abide by OSHA law, still have to pay tax law and all that. But we're talking about ownership and overall management. Does government hire these people and put them in place? Are these people responsible back to the government? No. Which means they are what? They're private sport ventures. So what you just realized is this. Some private sport ventures are both for-profit and others can be non-profit. The designation is not the profit status, the corporate status. The designation is are they owned and operated by government? or privateers, private people. And so too many people get this misconstrued and say, nonprofit, profit, okay. But these guys here, are they nonprofit or are they for-profit corporate entities? It's a for-profit. Some of them are. You of that. Is North Greenville a nonprofit or a for profit institution? Yes. It's, it's nonprofit. Is Clemson or USC nonprofit or for profit? We would have to look them up, but they're nonprofit, yes. Well, what about maybe some of these entities? Most of them are going to be established as a not for profit, but in few instances, they can, they can have a for profit status. The government can own and run for-profit businesses. It, it has some, it does. Most of them are nonprofit because you get the benefit of that, and government is, is required to have a large percentage of their stuff in nonprofit. But you might find some in here that are for-profit status. 95% are probably nonprofit. But on this side, we have a wonderful mix of nonprofit and for-profit corporations and organizations. Most of your sport ministries that are owned and operated by private individuals are nonprofit private sport ministries. In fact, I can't think of one sport ministry that the government owns and operates on the sport ministry side. But they do lots of high school sport, rec sports, college sport, even, even other level sports. Uh, 
How about a private Christian school? There's a really good football program in town called Southside. Southside. Any of you guys go there? 